Good afternoon. We're going to start our NASCAR Nationwide Series availability um, in advance of our first practice this afternoon. We have now been joined by Sam Hornis, Jr., driver of the number 54 Monster Energy Toyota. Sam, um, a lot has happened since the last time um, we spoke in this environment. Um, you've you've had a son, and you've also switched um, switched race teams to drive for Joe Gibbs Racing, and this is your first start for the team here at Talladega. I believe you'll have seven starts total throughout the season. So talk a little bit about um, maybe what you've been doing um, during that time and then also kind of what it, what it feels like to be back um, in the Nationwide Series starting this weekend. Well, uh, you know, I, I have to say that you really would think that it would have felt like a very long time um, since Miami, being that it's been, you know, closing in on six months. But the fact of um, having uh, a third child, um, a lot of things happening with uh, having a six and three year old and also switching teams. Uh, it's seemed to go by very fast and uh, I'm really uh, feel blessed and fortunate that I've had the opportunity to uh, get my foot in the door at JGR to be able to be in the Monster Energy car to, to, to have a sponsor that, uh, that uh, makes a product that I, I use on a daily basis and uh, I, I feel like it's just uh, it's very exciting, but on the other hand, we're coming to Talladega, and there's a lot of things that are out of a driver's control when it gets down to it. So, um, you know, my big thing is just to uh, use this weekend to learn um, the team a little bit more. I, I've gone to um, a few races starting off the season, had the opportunity to listen to Kyle uh, and Adam Stevens work together. Uh, and this is, I feel like, a lot of ways to practice qualifying. Um, in the first half of the race or first three quarters of the race is me getting to know the team and all those things and uh, just super excited about the opportunity that I'm given and um, had a lot of fan support about you know how much people say they want to see me back in the car full time and believe me I want to be in it but uh, you know having the opportunity to, to get in this level um, caliber of a race car uh, makes me feel really good about it and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to this year for sure. I know it's only seven races, but uh, I already got one freebie this year. I'm getting a fill-in for Denny out in California. And hopefully, uh, we'll figure out a way to get myself in some more car, more races and in, uh, in uh, this JGR equipment. All right. We'll go ahead and open for questions for Sam. Okay. Let's start back there with Mike, and then we'll come up to the front here. Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. Sam. Saying you haven't been in the car but once since Miami, how are you keeping yourself fresh on the driving side of things? Any testing or, or running at local short tracks? Well, I chauffeur my kids around a lot. That's about the biggest thing right now. Um, we got 400 miles of practice out in California. Uh, you know, I've done some go-karting work. I've done some simulator stuff, but very, very little as far as uh, you know what I've been accustomed to in the past. Um, but I feel like the good thing about this weekend is, is it's not one of those weekends where it's, it's high stress um, right off the get-go because um, there's a lot of things that are with this setup that you run um, on these super speedways that are not, you know, interchangeable. You're not thrashing to find, you know, a little bit more speed. Um, it's kind of there or it isn't. You can change if, uh, some things, but it's not like going to Iowa that we're going to have in a couple weeks. Um, and fortunate enough to get an opportunity now with, uh, um, you know, Iowa having um, some resurfacing done there, you know, to, to get the opportunity to go test there. So I feel like um, by the time we get to Iowa, I'm going to have a whole lot more seat time. And I feel like I'm going to feel pretty comfortable for the fact that, you know, I went to California and hadn't been in a car for a long time. And got to go out there and get the car up into the top 10, you know, uh, in a seat that wasn't mine and, and a car that wasn't set up for me. I feel like that 400 miles was as beneficial as anything that I'm going to have uh, throughout the beginning of the year here. Okay. We get him. Go ahead. Yeah, Sam Al Muskie from the Aniston Star here, here in town. For a guy like me who's on the periphery of your sport and know generally what's going on, can you just take us, take me and us through the emotions of the end of last year, you know, being so close to the cheese and then out? That's I can't imagine something like that. Would you just help me with that? Yeah, there's been, I guess this is at least the third or fourth time in my career where I've been to a, a place that's been similar to this. Uh, you know, before I ever won my first IndyCar race, I was in a situation where it was almost 
what I felt like was going to be the end of my career. And I'm, I'm sitting there trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And in the course of a week, um, it went from not having a ride for that weekend to, to getting a ride, leading some laps and putting myself in position to be at a, at a bigger team. And, um, you know, that turned out to be, you know, two out of three championships uh, in a row and 11 race wins. So, um, that was the first time I went through it. And then I went through it, um, you know, in 2011, running a part-time schedule um, when I was still at Penske, and you know, parlayed that to within two years of almost winning the championship. And um, maybe that's setting me up for a failure or, or something else, but it puts me in a mindset where I've been here, and I know that uh, you know if I can do the right things behind the wheel and also do the right things with the sponsors, that you know, uh, hopefully I will be able to put myself in the same situation and set up coming up three points short of the championship. I might be able to win it this next time. Just to, just to follow on that, did did you when it happened when the end of the last one came, did you have something in the works quickly, or did you think that maybe it might be a while this time? Even with the success that you've enjoyed throughout your career, once you'd gotten in a car, because you never know when the end kind of comes, you know. Well, the good thing for me, and really what my opinion is, is. Um, if you're going to be somewhere for the length of time that I was and you can get your foot in the door somewhere else, I mean, there's not very many, there's only, you know, one other place I can think of that, 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 that matches this caliber of an organization for, for the wins and things like that. And, um, you know, I, I'm just really excited that, that Monster Energy and Joe Gibbs Racing gave me the opportunity to, um, to basically be a part-time guy. And you, that's exactly right. You never know what each thing's going to turn into. I went out to California to be there in case Matt Kenseth needed to leave and I ended up getting to run Denny Hamlin's car. I mean, that's how these things go. And um, sometimes not being obligated to somebody um, and, and maybe sitting at home a little bit more than you'd like to is better than being obligated to somebody and, and being out there and racing. And then when that next opportunity comes along, you don't get it. And that's been one of the great things that, that the guys at JGR have told me from the start. You know, as long as I fulfill my commitment to them, if you know, if I get an opportunity to do some other stuff, they're they're more than willing because they want to see me out there, you know, running as much as they can. So, um, I, I feel very fortunate that I have somebody that's um, has that kind of an outlook and you know, really have made me feel from the get go that they are have my best interest in mind about you know, giving me this opportunity, but also on how to allow me to move forward, too. All right, if we can get a microphone over here to Woody. Oh, Chris, do you have a question, yeah. too? Okay, go ahead, Chris, go and Woody. then, go ahead, go ahead, okay, Woody, and then we'll go back to you, Chris. Okay. Woody came with MRN. I'm just curious how crazy you expect or rowdy you expect this uh, knockout qualifying session to be here at a super speedway. Which one? I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> um, the the nationwide cars seem to do a pretty good job of it when went to Daytona, and uh, there was probably a little bit more um, of people getting to know what it was going to be like and just trying to get through that first one. But I would say that you would expect a similar thing. Um, you get sometimes the, the cup guys out, are out there, and, you know, it might be a little bit different because – you know, there's a lot more guys that are going for that that pole or, you know, want that good starting spot. But I think that there's always that issue that you could have some kind of a problem because you're you're putting some guys, even if you've got three or four guys together, they're going to want to get behind the main, main part of the pack because there is so much speed back there. And you have guys falling back, you know, overlapping each other. And I think that the, the the only reason I would say that the the cup cars you know might have a little bit more issue of it is because those guys are all more adept than doing that and falling back. So um, whereas some of the guys over here were just looking to get in a pack and run because they knew that was going to be enough to put them into the race, where those guys might might be a little bit more aggressive with with moving those things around. But um, I don't know. I, I hope it goes really smoothly. I think it's a great opportunity, but it is a little bit nerve wracking. You know. Um, you know, when you look at just even the JGR situation for this weekend um, on the nationwide side, got myself, which is the first race that I'm scheduled to be in, 
Bubba's first race of the year on the nationwide side and, and Elliot and we're all, you know, I'm sure we're all going to three try to work out how to do it and, you know, who's going to lead, you know, who's going to be in the back. You want to keep the pack together so you don't want to lose the, the third guy. So there, it's going to be a little bit interesting, but um, I think that that's part of the, the fun of it. And there's, there's definitely strategy involved in it as opposed to, um, you know, where guys have said over the past few years, oh, you know, it's all the car, all I got to do is get in it turn it for a little bit you know this is definitely bringing the driver back into it some more all right let's go to chris and then we'll come up to dustin chris knight nascar wire service uh sam i was just wondering about the infrastructure compared to penske at joe gibbs racing have you noticed anything big as far as working on the cars or just the way things are run over there and also if you had an opportunity to talk kurt bush after he practiced this week at indianapolis I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of difference in how the organizations are run, uh, being that the JGR operation is in a separate building from the Cup Cup cars, whereas Penske's got you know all of their stock car stuff, you know, in the same uh, building, and you've got the crew chiefs and engineers are all put right there together at Penske. There's a little bit more of that, uh, you know, trickle down effect from the Cup side but i feel like when you look at you know the 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 strength that jgr's had for so long in the nationwide series i don't feel like there's any there's nothing lacking there other than you know maybe needing more space to be able to throw everybody together if they wanted to do that but um you know, when i look at the cars I, I feel like there's definitely differences in um people's mindsets as far as what's important to be fast and you know the big for, thing for me is i this is still going to be my first time in a JGR nationwide car, you know, when I go out there this weekend. So I don't really know what the differences are in the feel of the race cars. And I'm really looking forward to, to get into Iowa just to be able to have a definitive, you know, what are the differences and what the cars feel like and what they want to be quick. So um, outside of that, uh, I haven't talked to Kurt since he ran. I talked to him quite extensively last year before he went and ran um, the car for the first time. And he had some really good questions about what, um, to expect out of the car and it really was one of those positions where I knew he was gonna he was really serious about going and running the Indianapolis 500 based on the amount of thought that he had put into it and the questions that he was asking me all right we're gonna go to Dustin Long and then to Stan Dustin Long MRN.com uh, a couple questions Sam uh, first off about nearly about a quarter of the field here uh, this weekend has not competed in a nationwide race here at Talladega. Now, some of the guys have competed in at Daytona earlier this season. What are the challenges? What uh, you know, if some, if any of them came up to you, what would be the things, or, or or what would be the concerns about potentially having so many different people with with not having the nationwide experience at at this track? In some ways, this track is easier to run at because it's wider you know it's got a lot more room out there on the racetrack but uh that being said it also gives people the opportunity to to make it three or four wide easier um and to maybe get themselves in a, in a bad position the, the start finish line being moved down and around um the other end of the trial will definitely gives uh the opportunity for coming off of four for people to make more moves the track being wider gives that opportunity as well so uh I thought that it went for the amount of rookies that there were at Daytona. I thought that it, it went pretty good, you know, for uh, what was uh, to be expected. And those guys all have another race under their seats uh, or under, under the belt. And I feel like it really gives them the opportunity to maybe have a, a little bit more confidence coming in here. But I don't know that that's always a good thing when you get um, to these super speedway races because sometimes while it's. Uh, you know, not a, may not be as exciting for the fans, you know, to get that first race where you just follow in line, make sure that you take care of your equipment. Um, you know, you you feel like you're just out there learning. You know, that that might put you in a little bit better position as opposed to, all right, I got this figured out now. I'm going to figure out how to get to the front. And really, uh, this package, the way that it's changed, um, even there's there's been some small tweaks to it from what I ran last in these cars and. I'm excited to see what the differences are at Talladega, um, just based on the fact that the track is enough wider to give people more opportunities to move. And I also wanted to ask you, since how, how does the simulation and the go-karting that you, what, what you've done kind of prepare you, or does it help you at all for this type of track? And I think back to 
this race a year ago. I know you were involved in the incident. I know you talked about afterwards that one car kind of came down and and kind of you know a short a small amount of space and it kind of forced you down and all of a sudden there was was the accident. Can can anything like that? kind of prepare or help with just that the quickness of how things happen out there or is that just something once you get back out there that you've just got to stick your nose in and just get reacquainted with 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 what happens in those situations well it's always tough here because there's a lot of times when people move and um you know last year I've, i've replayed that in my head a lot of times that if you know uh somebody wanted me to push them and they, they moved and it really was too late to make that move and I, I I moved trying to not hit them and actually got myself turned around based on it but you, you, you never know what happens when you hit somebody when they move and you just turn them then instead of you know instead of but there's a certain amount of that callousness that you know some guys that have been very successful at plate racing have been able to just when somebody puts them in a position they don't like instead of that that flinch second of of moving to try to keep yourself out of trouble they just turn that car around and you know keep going upon their way um i don't know i haven't been able to get myself in that position maybe running go-karts will help out a little bit because you can bump some people around but uh um the big thing for me with the running the go-karts and uh whatnot in the little bit of simulator stuff that i got to do it's just about keeping my mind in the game really um it's it's good physical activity as well to be out there and to run but uh you know there there just hasn't been enough of an opportunity for me to really do it the way that i i would like to and i would say that i could have went out and ran 20 go-kart races and you know been in the simulator for three days and it it wouldn't have prepared me as much or gave me as much uh Uh, is what that race in California did you know the fact that I got to go run 400 miles out there really I mean it just knocked the dust off and gave me an opportunity to get in a car and to talk on the radio and to think about some of the things that I maybe could have done better and working with different people a lot of times is a good good help because you can you can figure out what people like and what they don't like and you know what you like about them as well so um I, I, there's no substitute for that seat time and being in a in a re- actual stock car and running around. All right, Stan, go ahead. Hi, Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. Sam, <clears throat> it's going to be you and two other guys that you've mentioned, Elliot Sadler and your other teammate, in in qualifying. Now, number, is that going to be enough to put together a speed that could give you a chance to sit on the pole? Not just the three of us hooked up isn't going to be able to do that, but it, it being able to get behind the pack and to use what you know that pack is doing, the amount of air that they're moving, that's what gives you those opportunities for being on the pole. And do we need to do we need to be first here? No, but the closer you can be to the other end of pit road, obviously helps you from getting any kind of fender creases or anything like that. So. Um, we're going to try to because not only are we going to have to do that in practice and qualifying, but the three of us being able to work well together in the race is going to be, you know, exponentially you know, beneficial for us. So um, I think that it's really good for us to have the opportunity to now instead of what we used to do in practice, we'd come out here and we'd run maybe five laps because you, you were going to push, you know, you're going to see how far you could push. How did my car feel getting pushed? How did I feel pushing somebody else and then you go out and change it over into qualifying trim and you go out and run by yourself for the rest of the time so this allows you to get like three times the amount of activity as far as getting yourself ready for the race and being able to go out there and work together as a team okay and now based on everything you said it sounds like you have a little bit of concern about how well you'll run in the race itself but in having watched you over the years you're a guy who has a checkered flag in his mind you have that first place finish is there is there any reason to believe you don't have a solid opportunity to win this race it all depends on you know whether i i manage to avoid what's going on out there i mean it's, it's just not a race like um you know richmond last weekend where i i have the opportunity to to you know it's really about the driver and the car and there's not as much circumstance there's circumstance everywhere but there's just more of it here because it brings you know some guys that you know maybe you know haven't had the experience you know it gets them a little bit closer and it 
the guys that have a lot of experience, sometimes it takes it away. But you see the guys that win these races. I mean, there's a lot of times where it's the same, you know, group of people that are up there. You know, they've they've got a great opportunity. But it's just if you can somehow keep yourself up towards the front, and that was very important at Daytona this year. It's a lot different than what it's been in previous years. And, you know, I feel like the last, you know, four or five restrictor plate races that I went to that I've had great opportunities, but I also know the fall race of 2012, I was the first car on the outside line. You know, I'm like, I finally did it. You know, I got to the middle of three and four, and I'm in position to, to win this race. And about that time, I saw the bottom of Tony Stewart's car come up over top and right in front of me. So, you know, even if you position yourself, you know, to where you think coming off of four, you know, we're going to have, you know, uh, the, the best opportunity for a great run to get down there. It doesn't mean anything because it's a long way from the middle of three and four to the to the start finish line. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we're going to go to Kelly and then take our final question from Chris. Kelly Crandall from Popular Speed. Sam, you came in here. You're all excited. When you look back to last year and how things kind of ended with Penske after the two of you became almost synonymous with each other, is it? Do you have any ill feelings, or or is it just a, that happened and and I have to start over again, or or how when something like that happens when when you guys were together so long, how do you how did you walk away from that, especially after what happened in Homestead? Well. If we were to win out as champions, it would probably have been a little bit easier to deal with. But I feel like a lot of that's in the past. And I remember all the things that, that Roger did for me. And I remember, you know, doing my best to live up to the things that he expected for me. And I feel like we both could have done things better um, along the way. But we both did some pretty good things uh, as a group together. And if you hold on to any kind of hard feelings or anything like that, I, I know why they did what they did. And I'm not kind of person that holds grudges so I'm more excited about the opportunity that I have moving forward than I ever will be about thinking you know you know of what could have been so it, it, I'm, a, I'm a kind of person that it's you know I guess the glass is half full I'm an optimist and you know, I'll put a lot of stuff behind me and just move on because I, I also remember that you know I, I started driving for Roger because I wanted to win the Indianapolis 500, and I started driving over there. He hired me because he wanted to win an IndyCar championship, and we both did that together. So I won my Indy 500. He got his championship, and um, it makes me feel pretty good that we started off on the right foot, and maybe from there we didn't always go hand in hand, but almost won a championship. And uh, man, it's it's. Uh, it's always easier if you think back uh, uh, if everything would have went perfect. But man, I, I'm just, um, I had some, some opportunities going uh, towards the end of last year. And when I got the, the call that I, I was going to uh, maybe have the opportunity to run the, the Monster Energy car, and I had the opportunity to sit down with Joe and JD, I walked out of that meeting. I'm like, I got to give it 24 hours because right now everything in my brain tells me to to go ahead and to sign up you know whatever they want you know go for it because I felt like they you know they were the kind of people and the way that they presented themselves and the things that they said in that first meeting just made me feel like this is exactly what I need to do and I I felt the same way after 24 hours and the same way after 48 hours and the same way after 48 days so I just feel like it's a really good good opportunity for me and I'm just it's uh, really been difficult to wait five months to be able to do something with it. But on the same hand, um, patience is a virtue, so I'll do what I can. All right, we'll take our final question from Chris. Go ahead. Same Chris Knight from NASCAR Wire Service again. Uh, Iowa Speedway announced earlier today that you're going to test there, I believe, on the 6th. I just was wondering how crucial that test is going to be with Joe Gibbs. And then also, I think, going back there for the race weekend, there's a big uh, test session on Friday before actually everything gets rolling on Saturday. I just wonder if you could talk about that. I think it's really beneficial for us to have that opportunity because it uh, allows me, Adam Stevens, all the other guys on the team to get one more day of you know working together. And we were already excited that we had a little bit of a test day that Friday leading up to the race. So I feel like this is even better. Uh, it's a it's a great opportunity, and that's the biggest thing is is really getting that communication down. And I can go into Adam Stevens' office and I can talk to him about all the things that I want to do, um, or and listen to him about all the things he wants to do. But until you get into that, let's go to the racetrack, let's run 
laps. We'll talk about the car, what it needs to be better, finding out what the key things are that everybody hits off of. It, there's no, uh, there, there's nothing that you can do that prepares you for that. You know, you just got to go and uh, get those opportunities. So the fact that we've got one more day to work on it is a great, uh, you know, great help to me in my opinion.